Hey everyone, welcome here. Today I want to talk about perfectionism, what it is, where it comes from, and how we can let it go. Perfectionism is like a monster that promises to support you in life, but then secretly behind your back creates havoc. It causes you to waste your energy, to emphasize things that are not even important to you, the perfectionism monster thinks it has everything figured out and under control, but actually it's completely delusional. When we follow its advice, it may sound reasonable at first, but then we'll quickly notice that it wasn't helpful at all. The perfectionism monster's advice sounds something like this. Okay, so I know that you're afraid of so many things, of not being good enough, of being rejected, by your family, friends, and at your job. So I have the perfect solution for you. From now on, you're going to avoid mistakes at all costs. You're going to go beyond your limits. You're going to hustle, hustle, hustle. You're going to hide anything that isn't perfect about yourself. You're going to say yes to anything anyone asks of you. You're going to stay over time at work and pay attention to every little detail to make sure there is no mistake there. And when you're not working or interacting with someone, I want you to think about what you did wrong in the past and how you can avoid those mistakes in the future. Together, you and I will prove to the world that you are good enough. And there's just a little problem with this advice. It doesn't work. The more we try to soothe our fears with perfectionism, the stronger the fears will get. We will be blocked in our creativity and will not know at some point how to even get started with something because we'll be stuck in analysis paralysis. We won't know when to stop investing effort because we get used to always trying so hard. We will burden our health our relationships will be emotionally, mentally, physically tense and chronically dissatisfied. So if you're tired of listening to the perfectionism monster, tell it, thanks for nothing, I'm going to try something different now. Here are some ways of dealing with perfectionism and the tension that is at the root of perfectionism that actually work. Number one, perfection doesn't exist. This is a thought that can quickly drive out the perfectionist monster. When we realize that it's advising us to chase after something that doesn't even exist. I mean, can you imagine doing that with anything else, like buying a trip to a place that doesn't exist? No, usually we would never do that. As humans, we're not perfect. And our sense of being adequate and good enough comes from embracing our humanness, never from perfection. Number two, perfection isn't necessary. It's not only that perfection is real, it's also not necessary. You can be you with your weaknesses and strengths and experience a meaningful and happy life. You don't have to be perfect. Your life doesn't have to be perfect in order for it to be fulfilling. If you show up and are authentic and invest honest effort, that'll be enough. You don't have to be a superhero to be worthy of love, happiness, and success. And what really helps to internalize this is to look at the lives of people you admire and find inspiring and who, have, who are successful by your definition of success and to see if they're brave enough to tell their story honestly, their story will have elements of imperfection, of struggle and challenge. And it can be very helpful and healing to hear and um, hear these stories and see how someone who in your eyes is successful is successful, including the imperfection of their lives and themselves. Number three, the beauty in authenticity. 
when we allow ourselves to be imperfect, we allow ourselves to be real and that carries a lot of beauty. We can be real and authentic with ourselves and others and experience the beauty in that connection and in that authenticity. So allow yourself to feel happy and grateful about the imperfect you and about your imperfect life. Allow that to fill you up. The perfectionist monster is always trying to improve something. It always looks for what's wrong with you, your life, the people in it, your job, everything. And once we stop listening to this, the talk of this monster, it frees up space to really also look at what's going well and what we're good at and appreciate the beauty that is there in our life. Be grateful for that and be happy about that. And it allows us to see mistakes as a learning opportunity and to really strive for something valuable, striving towards something instead of only trying to flee from something that we tr we're trying to avoid mistakes and failures being recognized as imperfect, etc. Number four, having the guts to stop at good. Here's the thing. You can always do more. Whatever you're working on, whatever you're considering, there's always room for improvement. And our fears and the perfectionism monster will drive us to overexert ourselves and try to improve and improve and improve beyond what is necessary. And stopping perfectionism means rather than trying to soothe our fears by continuing to work, to look at those fears and consciously decide not to follow them and to practice stopping at good and not always needing everything to be done in the best way we can think of this task being done. Some tasks are simply not important enough to deserve that kind of effort, time, and attention. And this is actually a way that our fears can also decrease because once we've done something good enough but not exceedingly well and we see that the dreadful scenario that our fears are anticipating don't happen that's when the fears can decrease because reality has proven them wrong so it's not about um, doing work that is dissatisfying, but it's about being very conscious when you want to invest how much effort. And that is something that if we're driven by perfectionism, we're not able to do. Perfectionism means I want to do everything with full energy, full time, and all the details and everything. And that's, that's not possible. And so I thought of some exercises that you might try if you want to practice proving to your fears that not everything needs to be done perfectly all the time. So for example, you could get started at some new task without knowing 100% what it's going to look like in the end. Or you could practice for one week every day going home at the time your work would theoretically stop after your hours are done, even if you haven't finished everything yet. Or you could mow the lawn and leave a couple of pieces of grass uncut at the edges to the path or um, the flower beds. Or maybe more seasonally appropriate, uh, at least in the northern hemisphere, you could shovel snow in a way that is good enough but not perfect. I don't shovel snow that much so I, I, I can't think of what that would look like but if you have an idea put it in the comment section. Or you could go to work with a shirt that's not ironed or with 
no makeup or a very, very minimal hair routine. Or when the next time you have friends over or family, you could cook something really simple, not a three course meal. And for those of you who can't stomach even just listening to these examples, what to say of acting like that, remember it's not about doing work that's dissatisfying. It's about knowing what is really important to you and then investing your effort according to importance and not dictated by your fears of being discovered as a human that is not perfect. Nobody can do everything in a way that it's perfect-like or really excellently done all the time and not lose something somewhere else. And these exercises are meant to help us be able to stay calm and relaxed even when we're not going to do something perfect like, I'm going to say, or exceedingly well. Because that's something really important that we need to be able to do, to be able to stay calm and relaxed even if we can't do something excellently. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you got something from this. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Take care and remember, embrace your humanness to experience the freedom and happiness that being authentic brings.